Hello everyone, this is Ron from High Tech Legion and this is part of a review of the Zotac Z68 ITX Wi-Fi Supreme motherboard and this is the UEFI setup and as you can see this is a there's actually a mouse, this is UEFI, not uh, traditional BIOS and this is made by American Megatrends and here on the main page just have the basic information, the BIOS information, the, the BIOS vendor, core version uh, and the memory and the news. Uh, you can hear the uh, upon boot up you can hear the uh, the fans in the back they're spinning it there at maximum speed right now so that's only on boot up it will settle down once we reach uh, windows but uh, here in the next tab you have the advanced X setting is basically where you adjust uh, your overclock and more advanced uh, features you can disable uh, speed step and uh, Adjust the uh, post clock and uh, voltages. Uh, just the uh, addi uh, add turbo additional turbo voltage in millivolt. Uh, the ratio here uh, defaults 38, of course, is the 2600k we have in there. And other options, that other turbo boost options, and you can limit the IA core current. And the other one is the GPU boost, since the uh, Z68 ITX Supreme has an onboard GT430. It has a it has a built-in graphics uh, other than the, uh, the one Intel this is actually for the Intel controls it's not for that the uh, GT430 but uh, here you can adjust the Intel graphics configuration and you have the uh, memory timing here on the next tab you can have the dividers here up to uh, 2133 and uh, adjust each of the timing individual timing settings here at the bottom the uh, GT430 uh, right now I actually have it plugged into the GT430, the top two rows, uh, the uh, display port and the top DVI port are for the uh, display GT430 GT on board uh, display and the bottom DVI and the bottom HDMI port are for the uh, Intel uh, graphics. And uh, let's move on, we have the memory adjustment here for the voltages, I have it set to auto, just the PCH voltage as well here. And the next one is these are just the other uh, settings you can change. You have uh, the uh, PCL status, and you can adjust the fan speed and the CPU uh, fan control and the system uh, fan speed. As you can see, the uh, system fan speed where the GPU for the uh, for, for the GPU fan for the GT430 and the SAT bridge is uh, running right now near close to 5,000 RPM. So that's as you can see is very loud right now. You hear the maximum uh, speed. And even our CPU fan speed is uh, at, uh, running at the 1400 RPM. And uh, let's go back up. We have the storage configuration. Now the top, I plugged in two more drives here. We can see that the it actually sees the first port. It's seeing as the SATA 2 ports. I have the, these uh, Western Digital and the Seagate 1 terabyte drive is uh, plugged into the SATA 2 port. And the SATA port 3 and 4 are the SATA 3 6G ports. And I plugged in a Blu-ray drive there and uh, my boot my test drive. Now see, there's nothing plugged in the eSATA port or the mSATA port, so it's not detecting anything. Here you can change uh, the SATA mode also and disable HCI or RAID mode. Of course, you want to put it in RAID if you're going to set up the uh, Intel uh, uh, Smart Response technology. And also have the uh, CPU configuration here. You can disable advanced features like a hyper-threading, uh, limit the CPU ID maximum. Uh, power technology, virtualization technology is disabled by default. These are actually default values and uh, you can adjust it to whatever you want it to be. And uh, USB configuration, you have the legacy USB support, USB 3.0 support, XHCI and uh, EHCI, as well as USB transfer timeout and device reset timeout. And uh, you have the super IO configuration, you know, serial, serial port configuration here, it's a sub menu and the ACPI settings where you can change the uh, ACPI sleep state S3, suspend to RAM, S1, CPU stop clock or suspend disable. So I have uh, other settings here for deep sleep, wake up on LAN, and RTC wake up setting. And next one is the chipset, of course the display configuration. You can set the uh, memory allocation and you have the uh, IGT multi-monitor uh, is, set, is set to enable by default. You have the PCI Express port. You can set it. You can disable it or enable it. 
and you also have the uh, de have detect non-compliance device and here is the onboard device configuration you got a PCIe GigaLine controller the, net the network and a front a USB 3.0 port controller they include a front panel connector that plugs into uh, the header and doesn't actually plug into the back that plugs into the header and it's very uh, useful you can, you can disable it through this setting you also have the audio uh, settings here at the bottom now the next one is the boot configuration and uh, just basic uh, stuff here you have the setup prompt timeout quiet boot fast boot uh, of course BIOS interrupt 19 capture and here is the uh, boot option priorities now one thing I've noticed is that I well, let me go in here to the hard drive BBS priorities is that since I have two drives that are similar in name uh, it doesn't say which port it is plugged in so it can get confusing but uh, it reads the uh, it actually uh, let me just move that back down and uh, in the boot option it will only show uh, whichever one you picked on the hard drive BBS priorities but uh, it would have been better if they put in uh, which port it's plugged in so you're not confused in case you have something like this uh, it ha happens that we have two drives which are plugged into uh, the which two drives are exactly the same specifications but plugged into different ports so you don't know which one you're booting from it can get confusing especially if both drives have a Windows 7 installation on them and you also have your CD-ROM drive priorities here and the next type of security tab you can set administrator password and user password if you're going to put it in a public place and lastly you have the save and exit page where you can save changes and exit discard ch changes and exit same changes and reset, this card changes and reset and you also have other options where you can just save it while you're in the middle of uh, adjusting settings restore defaults, save as user defaults or restore user defaults and a quick boot override uh, just so if, if you're installing a Windows for the first time you can just uh, set it to boot to the hard drive first but uh, override it here uh, once and then you also have launch the EFI shell from file system device here at the bottom some uh, that's about it and let's continue on with the rest of the review.